What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. That's right, I said it. Diaries of a Drug Addict. Why do I call it That's Right, I Said It? I'm gonna keep going over this and drilling it into your head. The reason why is because unlike other drug addicts and people who have suffered with drug addiction all of their life, all of their life I talk about things that are embarrassing and humiliating. Things that, as a drug addict, you typically would try to keep hidden from people. Well, I don't want them to know I did that. I don't want them to know I used to steal pills from people. I don't want them to know that I used to go into people's houses and look through their cabinets to try to see if they had any expired narcotic medications that I could stick in my pocket and take home. You know, that's something that people don't talk about. Well, I talk about it on this channel because it's a real part of my history. And if you can get anything from my channel, at the least, it'll make you feel better about some messed up things that you might have done during your active drug addiction because you hear me talking about those things. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. I got past that. I've moved past that. I'm a completely different person now. So it does get better. It's been a part of my journey, but it is not all of my journey. And that's where the light at the end of the tunnel is. If you appreciate my candid nature on this channel and the complete honesty with which I talk about these things, don't be that person that takes the candy from the jar beside the cash register and then when no one's looking, you don't drop a quarter in, you just walk out. The cashier is probably not looking. There's probably not an employee looking. You probably won't get caught. I'm not going to catch you. I'm not looking. But do you really want to be that guy or that woman who takes the candy but then doesn't drop a quarter in? A handshake is all I'm asking. This is a free service. I try to make these videos as entertaining as possible. So all I ask is you just subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out a lot and I would much, much appreciate it. So, uh, second day in a row, I completely skipped my morning dosage of Kratom. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I didn't even want to do this video today. I'm just kind of like... <laughs> and I just spit all over my car right then, including my pants. Ah, congratulations to me. Anyway, it's raining outside. It's kind of a rainy, nasty day. I know, why do I have sunglasses on? Because I'm just freaking cool like that. That's why. You know, really, is the fact that when I talk, I talk with my eyebrows and my, and I look like, like a muppet or something. <laughs> I have really thick eyebrows, and my eyebrows like go up and down like when one of the Muppet Babies or something when I talk. So, I wear the shades to, <laughs> to kind of cover that up. To be honest with you, but I haven't taken my morning dose of kratom the last two days in a row. I'm not sleeping that great. As you know, I have a brand new baby at home. And when I say brand new, I'm talking about three weeks old. Count it. One, two, three weeks old. Plus, he was born a month premature. So, babies born a little premature like that sometimes have some digestive and gastrointestinal issues. He's constantly, you know, grunting and trying to push out either a fart or a poop or something. He just hasn't got all of that worked out yet, you know, because he was a little early. And um, that's affecting me at night. God bless my wife. I mean, luckily, she's on maternity leave right now, so she's been kind of staying on the front lines for me and being up with him at night. Um, he's a good baby. He doesn't cry a lot. Um, he just kind of gets fussy some. And uh, so I'm dealing with that right now, but I have to continue to be a man and a father Despite not sleeping that well, despite the kind of ups and downs of the Kratom use and stuff like that, I have to get up and just do what I have to do to provide for my family every day, don't I? I can't just, you know, call in and, and stay home. It's just not something that's really an option. So I have to do what I have to do. So um, despite that and despite not having the most energy and being a little bit like, I'll try not to be negative Nathan in this video because I am, after all, grateful for the things that I do have in life. And uh, even though at this moment I may not feel too extremely grateful, what I feel like is Stretch Armstrong and that I have, you know, five or six very, very strong individuals yanking me in all different directions and I'm just like... 
good. That's what I feel like. But um, I'm gonna try to put that aside to make <laughs> to make this video as entertaining as possible. So um, so I took about seven and a half grams of kratom yesterday. Wasn't too bad. I slept okay. So I think the work that I've put in the last you know month month and a half of really chopping down my kratom dose, I think is you know still maintaining still you know going pretty strong uh, i didn't have a lot of issues uh sleeping other than the baby um you know i was able to sleep okay i wasn't having a lot of issues with withdrawal so um i think all that work i put in up front is still paying dividends as far as uh you know lowering my tolerance because like i said seven and a half grams of kratom powder yesterday and um you know i still slept okay uh with that so i think that's about still where it needs to be i'll take about the same today um but again i've kind of you know i've kind of become a storyteller on here and people really seem to like um the stories about when i did this drug or the first time i did this drug or some of the things that i used to do in uh, active drug addiction to opiates and narcotics um i talk about those things on here despite um the massive level of embarrassment that you know it may cause i'm kind of getting used to it to be honest with you judge me if you will it's my past it's not who i am at heart it's what i did in the past and i had to go through that to get to where i am now i'm a much more balanced grateful hardworking person um and level person than i was at this point in my life you know it's a constant journey it's a constant growth um, I'm not a static individual that just has no room left to grow, um, for sure. And, and no one is that way. Um, especially for me as a drug addict, it's been a, a, you know, constant development of my psyche, of my life, um, you know, of my ongoings from day to day. You know, I've had to develop a, a life of structure um, so that I can stay away from you know, just sitting around constantly thinking about narcotics all the time. And I'm not saying it's not still difficult on certain days, like today specifically. But, you know, it is what it is. I had to man up and, you know, put on my big boy pants and just kind of do what I had to do today. So what I'm going to talk about today is the first time that I tried ecstasy. All right. Oh, man. This is a pretty good one. I say the first time because I'm one of those people that certain things I've only tried a couple of times, um, you know, maybe a, a handful of times each. And two of those things are one is psychedelics. I've only tried that maybe a handful of times in my life. The other thing is ecstasy. I've only tried ecstasy maybe two or three times in my life. But despite my inexperience with ecstasy, each time that I tried them were very, very, very notable. Um, in other words, I remember the experience and, and had some very interesting experiences while on this. So as I talked about yesterday, I used to be in this singing group. Um, when I say singing group, we did like, there's four of us, four guys, and we used to do like acapella, you know, and as funny as it sounds, we were, were kind of like a boy band, you know. Um, this is back in the late 90s, early 2000s, so, you know, I don't even have any music that I that I did with these guys. It's been such a long time. This is before the internet age and where you could find everything on YouTube and you could put stuff on, like, independent artist page, uh, pages and stuff like that. This is pre uh, WAV files, MP3 files, all that stuff. So, um, you know, all of this kind of stuff kind of went under the radar but it, nonetheless at this time I was in this singing group and there was this guy that we knew who was a a DJ we kind of all were DJs to be honest with you I used to DJ some as well for part-time work um, and there's this other guy who I, I won't mention his name he also used to uh, DJ well he kind of fell into being a sound guy for my singing group he actually wanted to be in the singing group with us really 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 badly but unfortunately, he just wasn't that good at this time. He didn't know how to, how to harmonize. We were like a quartet, so we did legitimate like four-part harmony, and he just 
he didn't have a lot of experience with that. He was, a, although he was a really, really great guy, hardworking guy, very knowledgeable when it came to, um, you know, doing do, running sound, uh, setting up a PA system, working with levels. You know, he was very knowledgeable in that sort of thing. Um, he was a computer guy, you know, and it was cutting edge at that time, back in the late '90s and early 2000s. And so uh, he had a lot of skills in that area, but he just wasn't the singer um, that we could really use at that time so he's our sound guy right but he and uh his fiance uh were known to mess around with ecstasy a lot okay and i was with the person who is the mother of my almost 17 year old son now and uh she was also my first wife she was not my first wife at the time. We were just dating. This is before we ever got married, before my eldest son was ever born. So I hope I'm, you're following. I'm making sense here. So we decided um, that we were going to try ecstasy with them. Um, with them, my brother was there. Um, the guy who ran sound for us, his younger sister was there. Uh, we had another DJ friend who I'm going to say his name because it's just too funny. If you saw this guy, he was like the male Elvira. His name was DJ Hollywood. <laughs> Seriously, DJ Hollywood was his name. And he had a mullet to where his, he had really, really long black hair that went about halfway down his back. But then he had a short mullet on top to where the hair was spiked. Almost like mine is right now on top short on the sides and about halfway down his back and it was all like pitch black and, and he always reminded me of like a, a male El, Elvira anyway <laughs> I'm probably dating myself some of you guys are probably like Elvira what the fuck is Elvira you know uh, but anyway so he and his wife were also there um, I'm in my you know early 20s um, I'm approaching my mid 20s at this point, maybe 24 years old, something like that. And uh, DJ Hollywood and his wife, they're a little older. You know, they're in their like mid, maybe upper 30s at this point. So they were like the cool older couple, you know, that, man, they've been in the game for a while. I mean, it, this wasn't their first time to the rodeo. I mean, I mean, they raised a family together and had kids together and everything. And, um, I'm not going to say they sat and did it all the time, but this was not their first time doing ecstasy. This was not their second time doing ecstasy. This was probably not their 20th time doing ecstasy. It's something they did, you know, kind of on a semi-regular basis. Myself, uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, my brother, and, you know, uh, the DJ's uh, younger sister, we're all there, right? Now, well, and a couple of her friends were there, too. The younger sister, a couple of her friends were there. And um, most of us, you know, me, my brother, you know, to, and my girlfriend, we're completely inexperienced. Never in our life I tried ecstasy, okay? So we get there. Uh, we take one of the capsules of the ecstasy. We start off small. Again, I wasn't one of those people who just, oh yeah, let me try that. Give me, ah, ah, give me all of them, you know, because I had, I wanted to try stuff. I wanted to experience stuff, but I didn't want to kill over with a heart attack either. And I was, I was one of those people, like, I was always kind of dumb enough to, to try just about anything, but I had this little voice inside my head that was like, watch yourself watch yourself you know i grew up in a good family where self-preservation is like that's a good thing you know you, you don't want to try to kill yourself on you know don't just be careful in life you know so i had that little voice inside my head that it was always like don't take too much start small whatever whatever so i wanted to try it but i didn't want to die from using it you know so we started kind of small with just one capsule so uh after maybe about 30 or 45 minutes or so, we're walking around, you know, walking around the house. And, and I admit, I kind of started coming on. I kind of started, you know, feeling like just, you know, kind of energetic. We're like, yeah, you know, play some music, you know. So the next thing you know, we're all like kind of just dancing in the living room. I mean, I'm sure we look like idiots to some sober person on the outside, but we're just having fun, you know, enjoying ourselves. And uh, ecstasy kind of gives you like a, 
you know, it heightens your senses. It kind of gives you like this sort of uh, sense of energy. You know, you become really energetic and you just kind of want to move around and dance and touch different things and this and that and the other. And there's a few specific experiences that stand out to me that evening. One of the experiences uh, is that we, my brother and I walk into the living room and we look and we're like, what are you doing? My girlfriend, uh, the younger sister of the guy who was our sound guy and her friends were all down like on all fours on the carpet in the living room. And they're like, Oh my God, feel touch this. Come here, come here. Just feel it. That's, that's crazy. These chicks are down on the carpet, like rubbing the carpet, like, Oh, Oh, this feels so good. What is this kind of just like shag carpet? What is it? You know? And the crazy thing is this is, uh, our sound guy It's his house. So his younger sister undoubtedly has been to his house about a thousand times. This ain't the first time she's seen this freaking carpet, man. You know, she's been around and walked on this carpet probably 200 times. So it's not like this is something new to her, but it was new that night to her and uh, she had my girlfriend and then her friends down on the and they were literally all just sitting there just stroking the carpet like rubbing the carpet like oh that feels crazy that feels so good and we're sitting there like I'm looking at my brother like like what <laughs> I didn't really get the same sensation there I kind of like energetic you know I was feeling good you know I was in a good mood whatever whatever but I was not like I didn't feel like stroking the carpet, you know, it's just not something it just didn't hit me that way. But, um, I found that pretty funny. And so, uh, probably the funniest part about the night is the wife of the guy who I referred to as DJ Hollywood. I'm not referring to him as DJ Hollywood. That was actually his name. Well, not his name. I mean, it wasn't his birth name. I'm pretty sure if you looked on his birth certificate, it wasn't DJ Hollywood. <laughs> But that was his, you know, that was his DJ name, DJ Hollywood. The guy who looked like a male Elvira. Long black hair and then a mullet. So, his wife, we're all standing outside on the deck, you know, a little bit later that evening, just talking, hanging out. And it somehow gets brought up. You know, DJ Hollywood was out there and his wife, I do not remember his wife's name. This has been over 20 years ago and I only met her literally that one time. I maybe saw her one more time outside of that, out somewhere where where uh, DJ Hollywood was DJ and I kind of saw her in passing, but I did not know this lady, so I don't remember her name. But um, she had very white skin, pale skin and red hair and was one of those women that looked like childbirth had just wrecked her she wasn't big she wasn't fat but like her hips and her stomach were just like a weird sort of and I hate to be like I like to sound like I'm judging someone or picking up her hips and her stomach was like this weird sort of shape like you know she didn't look like that before she popped out three kids sort of thing you know just she just had this weird shape about her and she kind of hunched over you know she, but somehow gets brought up that she had taken four ecstasy pills four right um i took one you know i'm a 185 pound guy at this time six foot 185 pounds i had taken one and this five foot four probably 150 160 pound lady had taken four now granted she's way more experienced with it than i was but it was too freaking much and i'm getting there so we're sitting there for a few minutes and uh and my brother you know the the guy the our sound guy my girlfriend everybody's outside on the deck and all of a sudden we start hearing her like <laughs> we were like you know like you 
you know, kind of like cutting eyes at one another, like, what the fuck is she doing, dude? You know? And, um, I remember her saying, like, I'm really starting to come on now. And, <laughs> oh, I guess it just hits some people like this, especially when they get really, really out there on ecstasy. But the next thing I know, this lady is going around to the different people, including like myself and my brother, and is like, not not on the chest, but like on the back. Like she's standing behind my brother, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, is this okay? Is this okay? It's like, is asking him if it's okay. And of course my brother, you know, he's, it, you know, my brother's more of a drinker. He wasn't really into like, none of us were into like ecstasy or little weed, little alcohol, a couple of opiates here and there. That was about the pretty much the extent of our experiences at this point. And uh, <laughs> my brother's face, of course, he didn't want to embarrass her or embarrass DJ Hollywood because it's his wife. You know, and he was like, no, nah, it's good, you know, but it's just like the weirdest thing ever. Like never met this woman before in our whole lives. Never, not once. And here she is just, <sighs> just rubbing up your back and putting, putting like her face and her head on your back and doing this. And, the, and to the point where a couple of times, even DJ Hollywood was like, is that good, man? You sure? You sure, you know, just trying to make sure, like, I know my wife's freaking, like, gnawing the hell out of you over there. Like, are you cool? Is that cool? And, you know, and of course my brother and I both were, were just like, no, nah, that's cool, you know, whatever. But we were both just like, what the fuck is this chick doing? You know, and, uh, man, that was an interesting experience. Um, needless to say we were there for maybe a couple more hours and we ended up leaving because it was one of those things where first time like that. Um, and it was my same, the same thing with acid yesterday. It was cool. It was fun. Um, I did feel it, you know, I, I did, uh, enjoy the experience while it lasted, but because of that little voice, that little switch, you know, I wasn't willing to go take another one, then another one. And then another one. I just wasn't going to do that, you know. And, and my brother was the same way. My girlfriend at the time, same way. You know, we just weren't going to keep taking and keep taking and keep taking. Whereas this lady was like, she was in it for the, she was in it to win it, man. She was in it for the long haul. She was in it to get fucked up as possible. And, uh, and she did. And, uh, I just remember that being such a weird experience, like this strange looking lady with really, really funky looking hips and a really funky looking body uh, coming up behind us and just taking turns like, you know, rubbing on our backs and just doing it. And we're just like, oh, this is so weird, dude. It's so weird, you know. And it's one of those things where she was there. We, we weren't there, you know. We, we felt a little something, but we weren't like, tweaked out of our gourd like this lady was and she absolutely was um but she was over the top to the point where her husband had to like hey come here babe come here and eventually <laughs> eventually dj hollywood like calls her over and, and has her like sit near him um and and so they they're over there like rubbing on each other you know apparently you just have to be touched and you have to touch something you know when you get that jacked up on it and apparently that's part of the, um, the, the ecstasy about it. You know, that's, that's where the ecstasy comes from touching things or being touched or what, from what I hear, you know, sexual encounters are just like, Oh, just mind blow. You know, I've never experienced it myself. Um, but, um, you know, I've only tried it a couple of times, so I guess I'm probably not the best person to, to, to talk, to discuss it. But, um, finally he just brings her over to him and they're both just like you know just loving on each other and this thing. and he did that because i think he saw like wow she's really fucked up and these guys aren't really fucked up and she's just being over the top and i think eventually it just got you know i, I don't he didn't care like dj hollywood didn't seem these are the type of people that i'm pretty sure they probably would swing 
you know, I could completely see this couple. I'm not saying they do or that they did, but I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure that they did. And that guy probably would have been completely fine if we would have taken his wife inside and just banged her in front of everyone, probably. Um, we weren't like that. And I think he kind of sensed that we weren't like that. So it never, obviously never got to that. Plus, we weren't as fucked up as they were. But I think after a few minutes, he kind of realized that, okay, she's getting a little bit over the top. And he kind of pulled her over to him. And they, they had their little, you know... <laughs> thing going on there for a minute but that's my first experience um with ecstasy uh, i did have a subsequent one subsequent one after that um where i was in a club and i kind of took some ecstasy and drank a little bit and uh and that night was a little different because i just danced a lot um had a good time a lot of energy um you know but uh, it all took place in the club and kind of by the time I left the club, I was starting to, eh, you know, kind of come down a little bit. So the the most interesting experience that I ever had on ecstasy was that particular one that I just shared with you. So anyway, um, it was good. It was fun. Makes for a fun story to tell. Uh, let me know a time that you've experienced ecstasy. Leave it in the comments. Um, let me know. I love hearing your guys' stories. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.